Josh and Jacob, you are uh, two of three composers on Planet Earth 2, uh, along with Mr. Hans Zimmer. Uh, going into this, you know, Planet Earth is such a well-known documentary series, and this is your guys' first uh, outing with the series. Uh, what were your expectations or, or thoughts going into it? I mean, I think we were just privileged to have even the opportunity to be a part of a series like this and I think we we both knew the importance of the series especially at a time like this and you know I think we 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 just were determined to kind of look at it and approach it maybe in a different way than it had been done in the past and for this series it was definitely a more intimate look at these animals and we definitely wanted to bring the musical approach to that as well and really transport the audience to these specific habitats and make them feel like you were right there alongside these animals. Absolutely. So then, where did your work uh, begin? Um, uh, take us through the process of coming up with the various themes that you were going to use for this series. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we started by, Josh and I uh, worked for this company, Bleeding Fingers Music, and they were the ones that, uh, through which we were allowed to pitch for the show. Josh and I each came up with a couple approaches to scenes that the BBC sent us uh, and submitted our work as pitches among a lot of other really well-known uh, and re regarded composers. And, and we were lucky enough to be selected to, to do the project. And I think that initial pitch kind of set the, the tone along with Hans's theme, um, set the tone for the, the show as a whole. Yeah, we definitely, they started sending us early cuts of specific scenes from the various episodes. And we kind of were realizing early on, we wanted to really create distinctive sounds for each habitat, for each episode as you were there. So um, using Hans's theme as kind of a thread that could be used throughout the series and kind of connect everything together. From there, we really just dove into figuring out these different soundscapes uh, for each episode. So for something like the Grasslands episode, we used a lot of bell tones and like rustling of percussion. And then for something such as the, the Deserts episode, it was a lot more barren, almost a foreign, um, I don't know, otherworldly land. So we started using more bowed metal textures and things of that sort. And yeah. so that's kind of the, the initial approach we had. and. And then as we started diving into the project, we were developing themes just for various moods, whether it be a connection between a, uh, a family type theme, whether it be more of a kind of mysterious, magical sort of sense theme that could be consistent and carry through the series as well. Well, now you two have uh, been working under Mr. Zimmer for a few years now, right? I mean, you've been, you've worked for him on a lot of his, uh, Film. So what has that apprenticeship been like for the two of you? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of a, a masterful storyteller. And so just just being, starting out as kind of a fly on the wall and just seeing him work and then getting an opportunity to collaborate with him has just been a, a unique opportunity and pleasure, really. Uh, he's He just has a way of getting inside the details and, and the guts of a scene and you just um he puts he always seems to put an imaginative spin on it a unique viewpoint and is is just able to to bring out the the raw emotion of a scene like uh, not many people that I, i've i've been privileged to work with <laughs> yeah i would definitely say it's he he really cha helps challenge you to look at these scenes in a different way and um try to come up with something that's unexpected I guess, and that's, I think that's what has really helped guide us through this, this series as well. Absolutely. How, how can we relook at these scenes that you know, there, there's been many nature documentaries that have come out, and so we, we were definitely trying to strive for something maybe a little different, more cinematic than um, series maybe in the past. Well, there certainly is a, a cinematic epic quality to this music. I mean, it's, it's like watching Lawrence of Arabia, but with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the all the mammals and uh, creatures of the earth. Um, so, uh, where did the idea for that come from? I mean, that, uh, I think I, I think more or less uh, 
Hans and and the initial pitches. That was kind yeah. of the approach that the BBC had had said when they they were telling us about the project that you know the technology had had just taken such a monumental leap and we were able to they were able to use you know drone photography and get these seamless you know um, pan shots around animals that up close and personal uh, in a way that they hadn't been able to do before and so so looking at the footage and just responding to the footage was was kind of the guiding absolutely light. I think just both of us coming from a more cinematic background that's kind of where we initially watch the scenes I mean the editing cannot go unnoticed I mean it is phenomenal editing you know down to that infamous uh, snake and iguana chase where it's just it is a chase scene that beats any Hollywood movie out there I mean you just it, it's real life or death so it, it's I think it's it, that's what drove such I think a dramatic cinematic score for us is just the sheer drama that was being displayed on the screen. Absolutely. So then, going off of that, I mean, take us through the sort of nitty gritty of composing for one of these episodes. Where do you start from? Well, I think we definitely what was really interesting and fun about working on this project was we got to uh, collaborate with all each of the individual producers, and each of these individual producers are actually just scientists really biologists so they were they had a general idea uh, musically emotion wise you know what what they may be wanting to go for but they were definitely open for us experimenting i think uh, a major part for us with that was us getting uh, natural sounds that they had been recording out in the wild and trying to find clever ways of incorporating that into the score as well so it really kind of blurred the lines between what were natural sounds and what was music so, for example, we could take the sounds of wind that they had gotten up on top of the mountains and kind of shape them and turn them into pitches that you could incorporate into the mountains episode. And the same could be said for something in like the grasslands episode where it'd be rustling the grass that we could turn into a percussive instrument and, and incorporate that throughout the score. And I, I know for something for deserts, yeah, we did we, something. With the locusts, uh, we did uh, the the swarm sound that the locust made was just very visceral and, and unique. And so that, that became a texture for kind of uneasy moments in that score. Uh, in terms of process, we, we would both watch the, the episode together and kind of between us decide who was going to tackle what scene. Luckily, Josh and I are right down the hall from each other in the Bleeding Fingers building. And so there'd be a lot of back and forth walking into each other's rooms, borrowing motifs from one scene and bringing it into a later scene in an episode and, and kind of making a cohesive moves like that throughout. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us, it's you know, the footage was just so awe-inspiring. And I think talking to producers, I mean, and I, even there's the sheer bravery that these people have to go out into these habitats and go on top of these you know top of the world essentially to get some of these shots it's i think that was very inspiring for us too and so i think we just would have natural like guttural reactions to each scene and you know whoever <laughs> reacts to the scene then you went off and, right. and tackled it so absolutely yeah well then what were some highlights for you guys from uh, your work from this season yeah i mean definitely the the uh, snakes versus iguanas was was a highlight uh, just in terms of having scored, you know, fictitious battle or chase scenes in the past, uh, it, it eclipsed anything I had worked on previously, uh, you know, in a blockbuster movie or anything like that. Um, and and just uh, as Josh, to echo what Josh was saying earlier, it was you know a very real survival story about these these poor baby iguanas that have only been on the, the earth. They've you know literally hatched from their shell moments before. And they've got to make a run for it, and and just the um, the adrenaline behind that, and the way that it was edited, uh, was, was just such a, a thrilling thing to work on. Yeah, I would say also for me the the cities episode as a whole was definitely a a really interesting episode to work on, considering it, it's kind of the newest habitat, and you didn't have necessarily maybe the the natural sound of the world that. Uh, that we were using for the other episodes. So it was it was just interesting to see these wild animals in places that are so familiar to us and yet doing things that 
you know, almost seemed unfamiliar. And, you know, had you just looked up in the New York skyline, you maybe would have seen some of this stuff happening. But uh, I think that was, I, I think that was a really interesting episode. And it just kind of, for us, reminded us too of, you know, our importance in helping preserve yeah. this this planet. And so I think there's, there's, there was a constant kind of overall arc as we were working on it, just of us feeling the, um, the importance that that series like this do exist and, you know, in hopes that it would reach as many people as possible. And just, you know, it, it gives you a glimpse into, I think, plenty of worlds that we don't often get to see. So I want to talk a little bit more about that because, I mean, this show really does highlight the uh, magisterial beauty of the world that we live in. And uh, a lot of uh, people probably don't get to see that. And uh, knock on wood, we'll be able to see it uh, in the coming centuries. Um, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I think a perfect example might be that of the snow leopard sequence in the mountains episode where they would take ca uh, camera traps and put them up at the top of these mountains that would be triggered as the animal would go by. And it's really, I, I'm pretty sure it was the first time they had ever gotten three snow leopards onto a ca onto a screen at one time and there was just something so mystical about watching the scene it's just like something that you know I, I you don't even know if you're supposed to be seeing it's just it, it felt so magical and i think that helped lend uh the score to be very magical in that sequence as well and you know, i think it was uh, it was a huge thing to be to have the opportunity to meet David Attenborough and have his involvement on the project, just given his history and the importance of nature series like this. And I think they did a, a wonderful job of just setting certain reminders throughout the series Absolutely. of our importance and uh, helping preserve this, this planet and our involvement in it, but without necessarily pointing the finger in any sort of way. I think it was just, it, it does a beautiful job of just reminding you of what is out there and... and What's at stake, really. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, if we don't protect the world that, that you know, we live in. Absolutely. Well, Jacob, Joshua, congratulations on your work, and thank you so much for taking the time to chat. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. The pleasure is ours. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.